Hey everybody! In today's tutorial, I'm going to be doing something called dendritic printing using a gel press. Now the word dendritic just means something having a branched form resembling a tree. And I'm going to show you this because my friend Shannon did this as a challenge on Split Coast recently. Now dendritic printing is normally done with two rigid non-porous surfaces like pieces of thick glass. You can also use plastic, but I decided to try it using the gel press. It would give me a little bit more give, and it was really just an experiment. So I have two different sized gel presses here, and I got a little bit too much paint and <laughs> went crazy. But for this technique, you do need a good paint load on your gel press. It's the squishiness of the paint that creates the dendritic shapes. And so I'm going to get some of this off. These were brand new bottles of Lucas Krill paint, and <laughs> they came out of the bottle a little more enthusiastically than I had planned for. But like I said, you want a thicker paint load than you normally do when you're gel printing. That'll give you the most dramatic results. And I'm just going to take one of the petites and gently lay it down. You do want there to be paint on most of it. I like to have a little white space showing through. But it's when you lift the second gel press that you get these fun branching shapes. There's also a little bit of directionality to this. So since I lifted the petite vertically, I got vertical branching shapes. If I had gone from side to side lifting it, I would have gotten horizontal branched shapes. That's kind of fun to play with, is just that directionality in this. But I'm going to go ahead and get some more kind of goopy paint on there. I love this fluorescent magenta in the Lucas Krill. It just really adds a pop to whatever you're doing. So I'll put this little guy back down on there. The most important thing, if you want to retain that branch shape in your final print, is to have a very light touch with the paper onto the printing surface because any extra pressure will squish that paint together and you'll lose some of those forms. But that's a good one. That really shows you sort of that, I don't know, it looks like undersea plant life to me. Coral maybe with some more elongated stripes from the two plates coming together. I like to add paint in between every time that I put the two plates together because you get more dramatic results with more paint, but you can also just print with the leftover paint on either plate. So there you can see those nice vertical formations. And I will pick those up. I found when I was doing this printing that cold press watercolor paper retained more of the details than plain cardstock. So you can see here that captured all the detail. Now I have one more piece of watercolor paper and I'll just put that down onto the main plate and just pick up what's left just for grins. And you get lots of those dendritic forms in there. So then I thought I would do an experiment. I have some open medium from Golden. It's an acrylic medium, just designed to keep your paint wet a little bit longer. And I'm going to add Distress Oxide reinkers to this. Ink is not thick enough or viscous enough to do dendritic printing with on the plates, but this medium will turn the oxides into basically an acrylic medium. And so I thought I would see what that looked like on the gel press and see if I could get some of those little dendritic forms. So this is Peacock Feathers and Twisted Citron, two awesome colors together. And you can see they're a lot thicker than they just would be in reinker form. And I'll do the same thing. I will put the smaller petite plate on top of the larger plate and see what I get. Now I had a little hole, so I'm gonna go back and just pick up some of that ink. 
And you definitely can see some of those streaks. It's not as distinct as it was with the acrylic paint, but it's definitely there. And I'll pull it up and you can see it's a little bit more dreamy and a little more mixed together, but it's really pretty and you still are getting some of those pull marks where the two plates come away from each other. Now I'll add a third color. I'm going to add some worn lipstick and a little bit of medium. And these mediums come in different weights. So I could get an even heavier body one and I might get more distinct marks from that because I am watering the medium down just a little bit with these inks. The ink refills are very fluid for this ink. But it's definitely giving me enough to do some interesting prints. Now my plate sort of looks like a Monet <laughs> with that third color in there that's really beautiful. So I'll press the petite down here. You can see my fingers are already getting pretty colorful. And I'll press and make sure I'm not going to get any more of those little bubbles. Just move that around. And here I'm doing sort of a diagonal lift. And so you can see the marks go diagonally. They're going from one corner to another. And this is just regular cardstock here that I'm using. Only because I just ran out of cut pieces of watercolor paper. But here you can see that sort of radial effect coming up from that left corner. Now you can always try to pick up a little bit of leftover paint. There won't be as much here this time, but you might still get a print out of it. I'm actually kind of liking those little bubbles that I see. A lot of these look sort of aquatic, and I think whenever you can get one of those organic shapes, it's pretty cool. Now I'm going to try just the mat because the my craft mat is also non-porous and so I'll just get the paint a little bit closer together get each color a little bit closer and you can see it beading away from itself there just beading up a little bit on the mat so you have to work kind of fast and just pick some up and there you can see the little stripes forming right there at the top. It's like magic. Got a lot of the branching happening right there. So very, very gently pick that up. You can also get a little more of the dendritic action when you pull the paper away from the plate itself. So, and here I'm just using the back side. They're both so messy now. I'm just using both sides of the, the plate at this point. And I'm just lifting this off and I got a nice sideways motion there that's really pretty. It looks like water. So I'll try to preserve that with a very light touch. And that does have that watery look. So these are much softer motion lines than with the acrylic paint, but they are still there and they look great. And here are the finished projects, one with paint and one with distress oxides and open medium. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching.